Welcome to Movie Speeching. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take good care. Rebel Moon Part 2 The Scar Giver is the name of the movie. The universe has been conquered by an evil empire known as Mother World. Their leader is Balarus, who has taken over. After the royal assassination, there are rebel groups forming on different planets, so the empire is sending soldiers around to destroy them. A few weeks ago, Admiral Custody landed on the belt and asked the farmers to prepare all the grain for his army, promising to return for it in 10 weeks, delivering all harvested for the soldiers. Was leaving the village without food, so former Imperial soldier Cora and her boyfriend Gunnar moved to gather a group. Warriors would help them fight soldiers on their journey. They were lucky enough to find Atticus at a trading post, and a battle ensued, in which Korra took down the Admiral. Unfortunately, the Empire is recovering. Attacks Atticus' body and puts him in a machine to heal him as soon as he feels better Atticus announces that he wants revenge while Velt Korra and Velt return to their village with the team. Of the warriors, they put together a robot, called Jimmy, who belongs to the Empire, watches from afar while waiting meanwhile, former soldier Eris has also betrayed the Empire, so one of him, the, the commander call to check on the harvest. Progress Aruz confirms the team is doing well, and he was working when Korra was killed. All ARS are on the village side, now and inform others that Empire will arrive in five days. General Titus gathers all the villagers, and the group gave a powerful speech he came up with an idea because the bead was important to the soldiers so they would use it to protect their home. This way, the Empire cannot bombard the village without destroying the spoils of war in the process. Titus also announces that the warriors will train the villagers in a military arts war so that they can stand firm when the time comes. Later, Gunnar and Korra met privately, and finally got it for the first time. Together after completion, Korra shares why she is a wanted criminal. Korra is by Syria adopted a daughter, and she is working for the Empire. She was such a great soldier that she eventually became the prince's bodyguard. One day, the king decided that he was tired of war, and that he would begin to take a more political approach. Valorous hates it because it will take away power. Left him and his army, so he and other lords arranged a meeting with the royal family to ambush them while by Syria stabbed the king and queen Korra to death. Followed her father's orders and shot all the royal guards then she turned towards the princess she hesitated to kill such a young girl looked into Korra's eyes and said I forgive you for that at that moment Valorous shouted at Korra to react Korra opened fire killing the princess however instead of being grateful for Korra's help Valorous used her as a scapegoat and claimed that she had killed the entire royal family ordering other soldiers to stop her destruction in this betrayal Korra shot and killed his comrades to free herself, but instead she couldn't bring herself to shoot and kill her father. She ran away, changed her name, and hid on Velt's farm while pretending to be a war orphan. Back in the present, Atticus goes on a rampage in the infirmary because the doctors refuse to release him and he's tired. Waiting, after much screaming, he finally killed the doctor and was finally allowed to return to work. A soldier noticed that the medical team had left a scar on Atticus' chest, but he decided not to heal it because it reminded him of his need for revenge. Mark is where Korra injured him in the final battle. Because of this, Atticus began calling her the scar maker. For the next five days, all the villagers and warriors woke up extremely early to tend to the crops. Working side by side allows them to bond and improve teamwork, which is part of the training process. Additionally, the group harvests grain by harvesting, gathering, threshing, and finally processing the grain into flour. These days, Nemesis also bonds with local children, which helps her heal. After losing her own children, Titus makes sure to only drink water to avoid relapse. Aruz continues to receive calls from his commander, who finds it strange that the other soldiers never appear on screen without hesitation. ARS claims that the others are watching the harvest, so that the villagers don't scam them and he is stuck on the phone because he is new. However, after the last call to Atticus to tell Eris that he is lying and guess that Korra is behind all of this when the harvest season finally arrives. In the village, gather for a celebration, and Sam gives each warrior a homemade banner with a symbol representing their personality. Then the crowd finally celebrates the end of the harvest season with many dances and drink alcohol. Titus even sings for everyone, a gentle nostalgic tune heard by Jimmy on the hills. The next day, the real training session began. Starting by moving all of Barnes' grain to the existing village and placing it around each house, they also dug a hidden trench in the field. Hoping this would help them achieve the element of surprise, Eris took out any weapons his old team had left behind and the villagers searched for any handguns and knives they could get their hands on. Korra and Titus taught the locals how to shoot guns, and while some still preferred using blades because of its resemblance to farming, others like Sam proved to be natural shooters on the ship. Korra escaped and was still in the mountains so the villagers worked together. To remove Move and repair it in case they needed it after ARS took care of any problems the ship might have. For a long time it was abandoned. COR gave it a test run and confirmed that it worked fine at night. Titus points out that before the enemy arrives, they should explain why each of them wants to bring down the Empire in this way. They can strengthen their relationship. Volunteer goes ahead and explains that he was an Imperial General on the day a colonial kingdom voted to leave and gain independence from the Empire. 
However, Valerius did not respect their wishes and sent Titus and his squad to open fire on the capital. Titus refused to obey that order and a ship was shot down, but his comrades always supported him. Together they fought against the empire but were easily defeated. Therefore, Titus offered a surrender agreement in exchange for the lives of his men. His calls were ignored and his entire team has been executed in front of him ever since. Titus feels guilty for causing all these deaths and vows to never surrender to the empire. The empire was again inspired by the story of Titus. Other warriors also shared theirs. Melos also came from a humble farm, but her people refused to fight and surrendered to the soldiers. All the farmers were captured and sent to labor camps across the universe. This made Melos one day found during a mining operation. The resistance arrived and were killed. The entire empire. Soldiers and slaves have been freed since then. Melis fought them afterwards. Nemesis shares that she comes from a small fishing village, which was unfortunately destroyed by the Empire. All the inhabitants were massacred and Nemesis had to watch her family die. After a terrible depression, Nemesis craved revenge so she searched for hidden weapons that the village kept from a time when they were not yet pacifists. She has never shed blood. Before, she then used molten metal. Blade to start with its own blade. This is a part of Passage's ancient text that allows him to replace his arms with mechanical gloves when it is T's turn. He confesses that he is the prince of his father, the king, who tried to attempt it to introduce its own terms to the empire, responded by returning his body, and promising an imminent invasion, enemy ships appeared at T and were destroyed, the whole place without hesitation. The queen's mother could not bear it, so Tar had to be vigilant to suppress Tar, escaped by hiding on a refugee bus in hopes of preserving his bloodline in the future after everyone was done sharing. Titus asks Kororo about her own story, but she only says that she was a war orphan and that she was also an empire. Soldier Titus was skeptical when she didn't add any more, but he didn't press. The next morning, Cora boarded the boat and flies to the mountains, where she crosses a waterfall to enter a cave and meets Jimmy. They bonded because they both worked for the Empire and has now found a new purpose in protecting the innocent, but Jimmy thinks the chances of winning battles in the village are very low, according to the locals. After hiding a series of bombs in the trenches, just as the enemy ships arrived, everyone rushed to their positions. Atticus and their men used radar to investigate the situation. They discovered that the grain was being used for farming so they couldn't open fire, but they also kept an eye on all the women and and children. Kept in the longhouse, Atticus announced that he would pretend to negotiate with C.O.R. while he sent men. Soon, a group of small ships arrived on the belt, and Atticus met Cora, who suggested that the soldiers take the grain and leave without fighting, so that they could avoid bloodshed, but Atticus now wanted a bigger reward, so he offered like that his men had long surrounded Hosi. Won't shoot if Cora agrees. Going with him, wanting to protect the facility, Cora signaled her friends to retreat and agreed to leave with Atticus. First, she says goodbye to Gunner, who refuses to lose her and takes her gun. To fire the city bell, the signal to start the battle, the warriors came out of hiding and immediately opened fire, blowing up the enemy ships and forcing the soldiers to scatter, pushing Gunner and Cora into the water. It is likely that they will escape on their mounts to carry out an alternative plan. The explosion gives the villagers the advantage and soon Imperial soldiers will be falling everywhere. Enraged, Atticus jumped into the trench and began killing villagers at close range in an attempt to disrupt their organization, the few surviving soldiers attempting to escape on their ships. But the villagers threw bombs that quickly fell into the longhouse. The soldiers rushed in and Nemesis fought them with her blades, while Eris and Sam reinforced them with their weapons. Nemesis is an incredible warrior and she has taken down several soldiers, all alone, but they kept coming. Finally, Atticus tried to leave the trench, in which he used his protection, and went to the ship near the longhouse when he boarded a villager who jumped on him and tried to kill him. However, with his knife, Atticus easily overpowered him in a few moves after killing the man with his own blade. Atticus pushed the body out of the ship. At the same time, Cora and Gunnar boarded his old ship and used smoke bombs to pretend it had been shot down because it was an imperial ship. The enemy was thinking of his soldiers and let them in main ship. The duo hide their faces in empire gear and pretend to be unconscious, so they are taken to Titus Village's infirmary and give powerful speeches to their team to inspire them to fight. Meet the soldiers without fear and start a fearsome war. The attack on the longhouse nemesis continues to fight. However, the number of enemies continue to increase. Rose, and soon his mechanical arm was severed. Sam is also overwhelmed and her weapon is destroyed, but before she can be killed, a ruse jumps on the soldier to shoot him down. Nemesis refused to give up and continued to fight with one hand, but was quickly knocked down and stabbed, enraged. One of the children escapes and stabs the soldier, who grabs the child by the neck, which allows Nemesis to fight back and eventually kill the last enemy in the longhouse. The child hugs Nemesis, who says goodbye and then dies in the trenches. Most of this team is dead, so a villager activates a bomb to take out as many soldiers as possible. Unfortunately, the cavalry continued to make it difficult for Team Tar and Titus to defend the village, no matter how hard they fought. Soon, the soldier 
soldiers will bring in several robots that will open fire faster than any human can keep up while the villagers continue to fire. Sneak through the smoke and killed a few soldiers with a blade. This allowed him to get close enough to the automatons and shoot them in their weak areas to knock them out and give the villagers a chance on the main ship that Korra and Gunnar were waiting for. Nice moment. To pull out their weapons and kill all the surrounding soldiers, then they kiss before going out into different hallways to set off a series of bombs because of their uniforms at first. They moved unnoticed, but soon a soldier found Korra in the central power room. Immediately shoot her and jump to the floor below, where she continues to fight any guards in her way. The soldiers sent word about this attack, and Atticus was happy that Korra was technically captured because she was his ticket to success. He ordered his men to open fire on the village, regardless of the grain or soldiers they might lose in the attack. Process in the village. Another automaton arrives with more soldiers and the townspeople begin to lose hope. Suddenly, Jimmy appears on the battlefield and starts moving at extraordinary speed. He destroys a group of enemies and goes into the car to blow it up, giving the villagers a chance to fight back on the train, Gunnar waiting for Korra to escape. However, Korra continued to encounter enemies and could not stop fighting each time. In two steps, she steals a blade from a soldier and encounters Atticus while his men prepare the cannon. However, at that moment the bomb explodes and trembles. The ship caused the guns to miss and hit the hills instead of the village. As the ship begins to sink, Gunnar steps in and tries to show off Atticus. Taken down first, Atticus and Korra then begin a sword fight that sends them sliding across the room as the ship continues to fall. Korra kicks Atticus, but he managed to hold on at the last second and attack again. Both warriors lost their blades in the process, and Atticus jumped on Korra, trying to strangle her. However, he interrupted by Gunnar, who stabs him with a blade that is now Korra, was able to push Atticus back and catch him in the doorway and finally decapitate him. And Gunnar returns to his old ship and escapes just in time before the ship crashes into the planet causing a massive explosion. Korra's ship also crashed upon landing. She rushed to help Gunnar, but it was too late and he died inside her. Weapons at that time, the resistance arrives with their ships and they help the villagers effectively end the battle by defeating the enemy while everyone is on the ground. That evening's celebration, everyone gathered to say goodbye to Gunnar Nemesis and all the fallen villagers were burning their banners. With a feeling of bodily guilt, Korra finally shared her story. To everyone but Titus reveals a big secret, the princess is not really dead, because she holds great power. Korra wants to find her and continue fighting. Fight the Empire to liberate others, planets and the rest of the warriors, including Jimmy. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, leave a comment about your favorite movie, and we will make it next. Thanks for watching.